And it's the spirit is not this mystical, invisible force that kind of jumps around and blows wherever he wants to. In fact, the, the great verse that's often quoted about the Holy Spirit is completely misquoted about the Holy Spirit. Remember what John says when he opens his gospel and he says, the wind blows where it wants to and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know from where it comes or from where it goes, such is everyone born of the Spirit. And how do we quote that in the church? We say the Holy Spirit is a wind and he blows wherever he wants to and he comes from where he wants to and he goes wherever he wants to. And we, it's not up to us to know the difference. That is completely misquoted. Listen to it again. The wind blows wherever it wants to. You hear the sound of it. You don't know from where it's coming. You don't know wherever it's going. Such is everyone, everyone. born of the Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit that's just blowing around. That's you. That means that you are not always in a predictable pattern. Your life is not always in a predictable pattern. You blow wherever you blow. You go wherever you go. And wherever you go, the Holy Spirit goes with you. And so I have people that will say to me, Pastor, I love this message of grace. I'm trying to follow the Holy Ghost, but I want to know where God wants me. And I say, well, let's start with this. Where do you want you? And they'll say, well, I want to be over here. And I say, then why are you over here? And they'll say, because God hasn't released me yet. And I say, God's already released you at Calvary as much as you can be released. You can't get more release than the finished work. I said, so if you want to be over there, guess where God would prefer you to be? Well, how do you know that? Because the wind blows where it wants to. And you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know where it's going. Such is everyone born of the Spirit. Wherever they land is where they're supposed to be. Now, how do we know this for sure, Pastor? Well, what did the Apostle Paul say? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Most of us stop right there. Because we've got ourselves enough theology right there to get us in trouble. <laughs> Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You ought to be scared every day you're going to lose your salvation. You ought to be working this thing out with white knuckles, holding on to the Holy Ghost, because you don't know if you're going to make it or not. Well, if we would realize that we're not a period, we're just in the middle of a sentence, and we only broke it up because the translators busted a really good statement up into two unnecessary verses, what we would have read is this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both the will and to do according to good pleasure. Old King James really messed us up because Old King James says both the will and to do according to his good pleasure. Italicized his. It wasn't in the original text. I think the translators looked at it in the Greek and said, oh, it must be God's pleasure he's working in you. No, it's your pleasure. For it is God who works in you both the will and the doing of your good pleasure. So wherever your heart is being pulled and you know that is my peace, that is where I want to be. That's the Holy Spirit saying, I have set you so free to allow you to be there. Let's go. I'm excited about let's go. Now, how are we going to learn how to do this? We're going to have to practice. We're going to have to practice the power and the presence of following the Holy Spirit. And to do that, we're going to have to crash and burn once in a while. We're going to have to make some mistakes. We're going to have to realize it's not God judging us, that some of these things are just the consequences of life. Sometimes we make foolish decisions and we pay the price for it. Now, don't go to God and say, why are you punishing me? God says, I'm not punishing you. There are consequences to your decisions in life. Listen, you can go commit all the adultery you want to commit. You'll still be the righteousness of God in Christ. You probably lose your marriage, lose your reputation, go broke, and probably nobody will trust you in ministry and life. Well, that's God being unfair to me. No, that's just the consequences of what happens in this world when you break covenant. You go out and kill somebody, they're probably going to arrest you, throw you in jail. And if, I don't know if your state kills people in, in prison for murder, but if they do, you're probably going to die. You can go to the Lord and say, I don't know, I thought I was under grace. I thought you had forgiven me. And the Lord is going to say, you are forgiven, but the state's got consequences and you're going to pay them. A lot of what we're calling the righteous judgment of God is just simply the consequences of our decisions. You learn to live with your consequences while the Lord has always given us his righteousness and his forgiveness yeah. in our decisions. Always. Consequences oftentimes are enough to keep us from doing stuff, right? 
there are natural parameters that are called natural consequences that keep us from doing some things we normally might want to do or would have done, but we know there are consequences to them. However, I don't even want to do the right thing or do the wholesome thing or do the good thing because I don't want to have consequences. I don't think either do you. I don't want, I don't want to do the right thing because I don't want to suffer consequences. I want to do it because I know who I am in Christ and the goodness yeah. that flows out of me is the fruit of the Spirit. So we have to learn to walk in this experimental and understanding the Holy Spirit and the role that He has in our lives.